This is concurrent session one on the topic of triple impact and policy. Thank you very much for your participation. So we now would like to start this concurrent session, triple impact and policy. And I will serve as the moderator um, of this session. My name is um, Megumi Teshima, Professor of Graduate School of Nursing at Chiba University. Also serving as the moderator, my name is uh, Akiko Arai, Araki. Akiko Araki, Executive Officer of Japanese Nursing Association. Mr. Akiyama, the Vice President of Japanese Nursing Association, um, could not make it to this studio, and therefore I will serve as a moderator instead of him. And of course, we will take every measure to prevent uh, infection of COVID-19. Now. Uh, during the opening session, we talked about the leveraging of evidence in nursing in Japan, um, but we're going to go deeper in that and uh, talk about the importance of evidence that is impactful in promoting policies. Now, triple impact report um, that triggered nursing now um, pointed to three goals of SDGs, namely goal three, good health and well-being, Goal five, gender equality, and goal eight, decent work and economic growth. Um, the, for the nurses to um, uh, get involved uh, in society uh, which is healthy, um, we need to actually have various and enabling systems as well as environments, and we're going to um, hear about concrete examples from within Japan as well as outside in relation to the provision of evidence to policy and decision makers uh, for uh, policy realization. Now, um, to prevent uh, infection uh, risks, uh, uh, the prefectural nursing associations and the member organizations of the planning committee of uh, Nursing Now campaign are participating at other venues. So without further ado, I would like to call upon Dr. Akiko um, Arai Araki um, to uh, talk about the impact of triple uh, impact and uh, nursing in Japan. Uh, she has been uh, in charge of uh, international exchanges and promoting a Nursing Now campaign um, in the uh, recent years. So, Dr. Araki, please. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Teshima. My name is Araki. Yes, I would like to talk about um, the topic of triple impact and nursing in Japan. In this concurrent session, triple impact in policy is the topic we're focusing on. But before going into that topic deeper, um, let us talk about what are the triple impacts and why the triple impacts were actually uh, raised as an issue. And in Japan, uh, how are we to introduce that notion? So I'd like to talk about that. Now, this is the triple impact report. In the opening session, nursing now CEO uh, Dr. Stillwell, Barbara uh, Stillwell, uh, mentioned this as well. The um, trigger for Nursing Now campaign was this very important uh, report. And uh, it was issued by the all-party parliamentary group on global health uh, in the UK. And it was um, issued in October of 2016. And uh, uh, Sir Nigel Crisp um, that gave us a speech at the beginning um, belongs to this organization. And as they looked at policies uh, for uh, or related to universal health coverage, uh, they came across issues pertaining to nursing and nurses. And in the blue box here, um, it says, Nurses are by far the largest part of the professional health workforce and achieving universal health coverage globally will depend on them being able to use their knowledge and skills to the full, yet they are too often undervalued and their contribution underestimated. To, to increase um, the number of nurses and developing nursing so that nurses can achieve their potential, we we'll also have the wider triple impact of improving health, promoting gender equality, and supporting economic growth. So this is a quote from that report. Now, uh, Ms. Barbara Stilwell uh, said, um, nursing is the best buy. So um, it would be 
unwise not to make investment in nursing. Now, as is mentioned in the triple impact report, the advancement of nurses uh, contributes clearly to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. In other words, investment in nursing not only improves health of the people, but a sustainable development as well as economic growth. And as uh, was mentioned, um, SDGs will be realized through uh, efforts made in nursing, especially with regard to number three, five, and eight, but not limited to those goals. Other SDG goals could benefit as well. Now, the Planning Committee of Nursing now um, in Japan, as well as the 30 related organizations are considering this. SDGs 3, 5, and 8 are where the go goals have been shared amongst these organizations, and we have been making um, I efforts in those areas. Uh, due to COVID-19, we were not able to make enough efforts or activities uh, in 2020, but we firmly believe that we need to continue with our efforts in this front. Now, this is um, goal number three, which is ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Now, I think this has to do with the very core part of the activities by nurses. According to the definition by ICN, uh, it is care of individuals of all ages, families, groups, and communities, sick or well, and in all settings. And also, in the Code of Ethics for Nurses issued by the Japanese Nursing Association, it says the nurse's mission is responding to universal human needs and contributing to the realization of healthy living of people. Now, what we're targeting is to establish nursing model that supports the health of the people, the local residents, and uh, thinking about how the society will be in 2040 or so, we need to establish a nursing model that will protect and contribute to the uh, health of the community members. Uh, we need to leverage the uh, wisdom that we have so that the local residents overall can benefit uh, in terms of health promotion. And so we have to have this holistic view. And um, so this is what we have to show these functions that I have just um, talked about. But we have to have a mechanism in, in place to promote this. To the primary, to the tertiary prevention, we need to pr um, support the generations uh, of all on different levels. And we need to have a culture nurtured for health. And we need to um, not only expand the scope, but also the content that we cover has to be um, expanded, not just physical, physical space coverage, but uh, content-wise. And uh, of course, uh, there will be different uh, facilities that will be within this circle, including nurse-led comprehensive community care. Next is goal number five, gender equality. Now. Um, there are 1.66 million nurses around the world, and 93.9% are female. And it is said that one in every 17 working women are in nursing. However, when you look at the GGI, which is Gender Gap Index, uh, we rank 121st among the 153 countries. Um, of course, um, nursing is not a profession limited to females. Um, it's not restricted only to females, but it might make it difficult for males to enter uh, into. And it's important that we expand the potential of nursing profession with higher levels of autonomy and professionalism. And I think if we can realize that, it will be attractive to all genders. And therefore, the nursing profession uh, should not be gender-based. And that is indeed written in the triple impact report. Uh, it's important that we ensure a position where nurses can participate in decision-making so that our voices, the nurses' voices, are heard in hospitals uh, as well as local governments, among others. And it's important that social recognition uh, about the professional 
expertise as well as autonomy of the profession uh, be rec um, in enhanced. And that would make it attractive to younger generations as well as people of different background. Number eight, uh, promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth. Now, the decent work definition says it's work that are productive and deliver a fair income, security in the workplace, and social uh, protection. In other words, we have to have a good working environment where the capabilities of the nurses can be leveraged fully and also get enough or fair remuneration for their um, service. And it would also, in the end, trans um, transfer uh, or translate into enhanced health of the people, and that will push up economy as well. But of course, in order to have decent work, we have to work on various elements, such as the shift intervals of nurses, night shift, how many times a week, and also how many hours of work um, is to be exercised. So these are the um, items that we have looked at, especially the five elements. We have conducted uh, questionnaire surveys uh, about these because um, unless we improve on these and work together towards the improvement of these, uh, we will not be able to uplift the whole profession. And in order to do that, evidence is key. Now, in Japan, in, to realize triple impact and to have the necessary transformation, it's necessary that we have the appropriate evaluation about or towards uh, nursing and also um, invest, make sure that there are investments in nursing. And uh, to realize that, we have to show evidence, speak with the language that the policymakers will be able to understand and speak with one voice. And so we're going to uh, use data, and that is recommended that we use data uh, in doing that. So this is the use of data is maybe somewhere we were not doing the best possible work. So we need to um, improve on that. Now, Nursing Now campaign will uh, continue until June this year. So with the power of nurses, uh, let's um, have one voice to uh, make improvements in nursing. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Araki. Um, executive officer, thank you very much. I was thinking as I was listening. Now, the triple impact, which is the um, center of our discussion today, SDGs, especially goals three, five, and eight, and how they relate to the nursing situation in Japan was uh, clearly stipulated uh, in your talk. Um, the provision of evidence being needed as well as nursing being evaluated fairly. That was the point. Thank you. Tokyo Sanada Hiromi. Next, uh, we will invite Dr. Hiromi Sanada, Professor Graduate School of Medicine, the University of Tokyo, to present nursing evidence and medical uh, service evaluation. She graduated from uh, uh, St. Luke College of Nursing and obtained a PhD in uh, medicine uh, from uh, 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 Kanazawa University. Dr. Sanada, uh, has been in present position since 2006 after working as a professor for Kanazawa University. She has also been a head uh, director of Global Nursing Research Center since 2017, adjunct professor of a uh, faculty of health sciences at the Cardin Nas uh, University and the president of Japan uh, Academy of Nursing Science. Uh, she was inducted as a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing. She was uh, the recipient of the Health Sciences Society Award Pioneer category in 2020. Professor San uh, Sanada, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, introduction. So, uh, this uh, is a, a wonderful uh, symposium and uh, organized by uh, JNA. And also, uh, 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 Ms. Araki, the uh, moderator, I really extend my uh, deep appreciation to those uh, two. 
As uh, the uh, nursing researcher, uh, what uh, the most important thing I'd like to uh, present, which is uh, to present the value of nursing based upon the data. Uh, that is the principle of uh, the uh, uh, policy uh, research, uh, triple impact. The wonderful uh, uh, presentations today we heard. From the standpoint of uh, economic values, uh, now it's time for us to uh, present ourselves nurses, the value of nurses based upon the uh, economic value. Uh, so uh, I hope my talk will be uh, sort of uh, conducive to uh, the uh, understanding uh, of uh, uh, this importance. Uh, I myself uh, studying, uh, researching, uh, uh, pressure ulcer, and I thought it is very important for us to calculate the economic value of the nursing care towards a uh, pressure uh, ulcer. And I'd like to present to you today uh, the nutshell of, of uh, uh, my uh, research. Uh, so when it comes to uh, the uh, uh, prevalence of pressure uh, ulcer, uh, the, uh, Japan's uh, the, uh, prevalence rate is the lowest in the world. Uh, so uh, I think thanks to the, uh, our uh, big change in the policies, in 2006, uh, we had uh, the uh, new health insurance fee uh, for uh, pleasure also uh, for the first time. Uh, for us to get uh, the uh, uh, insurance fee for nursing skill in Japan. So uh, this was realized based upon the data. Of course, uh, quality of life for patients, uh, which is important to measure uh, the uh, value of nursing. But at the same time, what is important is to is uh, for us to get the whole uh, the uh, high um, uh, high quality data. So uh, without uh, uh, the uh, uh, designer R, which is uh, the evaluation seat for uh, the pleasure also uh, the outcome, uh, we are not able to realize this uh, insurance fee. So today, uh, including economic evaluation, I'd like to uh, uh, present my talk one, about 10 years ago uh, now. And so uh, the Japan was uh, shifted to uh, the home based care in the home -based, uh, home based care who will take care of uh, the uh, uh, pressure self uh, uh, also uh, so uh, in this case nas should be play a, a role uh, that is a sort of a sword emerged particularly centering around uh, specific uh, the medical intervention performed by uh, nurses. Why is this kind of needs uh, much uh, that uh, the, uh, 2006? So when it comes to uh, the prevalence rate of uh, pressure alpha, uh, also the hospital showed a lower rate uh, uh, than uh, home care. Uh, therefore, we uh, thought we really need uh, some uh, data, uh, particularly in the pressure alpha treated in uh, the uh, uh, home-based care. Uh, we need definitely data in order to show the, the cost effectiveness of uh, the uh, nursing care in the co uh, community in the home, at home. So uh, in the first place, we must develop a protocol, and uh, then uh, we train nurses, and then uh, nurses will uh, uh, practice, then uh, we will evaluate. Uh, that uh, took uh, three years. That is uh, the uh, uh, this uh, the slide shows that the, uh, sort of the curriculum development. One is uh, the uh, pleasure. Uh, uh, based on the treatment and negative pressure wound uh, therapy. And the, another treatment is uh, the debridement. Uh, that are considered uh, uh, as a uh, physician's practice. Only the nurses can help the physicians uh, for those two practices uh, because uh, the uh, bleeding is uh, the, uh, very concerned, uh, was very concerned about it. The, another point is that the uh, 
uh, negative pressure uh, is applied and uh, putting sponge into uh, the uh, wound. Uh, so uh, 125 milli uh, uh, hg, uh, the uh, negative pressure was applied. Uh, the, uh, therefore, uh, this is highly likely to have a bleeding. Therefore, this can this was not able to use in the uh, community, uh, uh, but the, the, uh, its uh, treatment is definitely necessary at the form. So uh, we uh, treated uh, the uh, ethical uh, uh, the concern, and the, uh, then we developed uh, the uh, research. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, based upon the researcher's uh, perspective, and also uh, this is a doctorate, part of the doctorate uh, uh, program research. And uh, so uh, what is the outcome evaluation? We have 10 nurses received this training. So we have a comparison control study between the trained nurses and the not trained nurses. That comparison was made. It clearly showed that intervention arm shows that the a design R reduction in three weeks uh, uh, really uh, uh, reduced uh, quite a lot. Then uh, we see that, that, that the kind of effect is comparing to the uh, cost. So, uh, and therefore, uh, so uh, one uh, half of the uh, cost was re reduced uh, from uh, uh, the uh, 76,000 to uh, 28,000 uh, yen. Uh, this is uh, really uh, the uh, cost-effective uh, measures uh, nursing can perform. And also next, uh, we uh, conducted the research based upon budget impact. So. Uh, as a result, uh, we can uh, reduce, we were able to reduce uh, 25 point uh, billion yen per annum reduced. Therefore, patient condition be, uh, became better and the cost reduced. So if in case uh, the nurses can uh, do this kind of uh, advanced practice uh, independently, which uh, will have an, a very good impact on the society, this should be uh, put into uh, lower uh, then uh, this became a law as a uh, specific uh, medical intervention by, uh, by nurses. And also the law uh, was uh, the uh, sort of the measure to uh, make the quality and the safety of the uh, nursing intervention. So uh, right now, that uh, specific interventions uh, are, have an, uh, 28 uh, practices. Before, uh, uh, that was considered uh, a physician's practice. Uh, then uh, the, uh, those two I mean, debridement and also uh, uh, negative pressure wound the therapy were included. And the next, uh, what is uh, the key to the uh, policy research? Already you well know that, that the motivation is very important. Uh, strong motivation is necessary. Uh, for example, in Japan, 470,000 people are, are not able to uh, uh, access to health care and die. So if in case you imagine that, uh, the, uh, what uh, do you do? Uh, this will lead to the, uh, uh, motivation. And also, in the uh, community-based comprehensive health care, uh, nurses will uh, play a, a key role. In this case, we really uh, think about the significance and importance of the uh, uh, nurses training for a specific uh, medical intervention performed by nurses. Uh, so those uh, skills nurses can do, uh, can perform uh, specific medical interventions. And the first is uh, the patients will be released from uh, predicament the pains. So uh, some patients uh, 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 have to wait uh, for physician uh, to come, uh, but uh, they, uh, without waiting for physicians, uh, nurses uh, can take an ac action, uh, then uh, providing timely care to uh, the necessary uh, uh, patients. That is very important. And another point is that. 
So what is the indicator? Uh, indicator uh, should be solid and robust, and uh, credibility and validity is very important for indicators. And those indicators are used in our study. Therefore, that is a precious, uh, precious uh, 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 achievement we have. And next, we are supposed to do is that research to study. There, how uh, the, uh, those uh, specific uh, uh, nurses uh, completed a specific uh, training uh, are doing. And uh, uh, what kind of uh, indicator we should uh, do uh, you uh, used to evaluate this? Uh, in the first uh, indicator is uh, safety. So in the first place, we thought that uh, the safety in the level of the uh, physicians uh, are doing uh, the, uh, uh, services and, the, and it is not enough. Uh, we need some uh, measures uh, to value the nursing value, uh, measure the value. And uh, that is an, a sort of an in incentive for nurses in the uh, uh, future. Nurses want uh, or more nurses want to uh, practice advanced uh, practice nurses. Uh, we have a lot of uh, data in the United States. Advanced practice nurses uh, show that a higher uh, patient satisfaction and a lower mortality rate. Therefore, uh, the American researchers are using a lot of uh, indicators to evaluate those things. But in Japan, we don't have this kind of researches. Therefore, there how uh, those uh, specific uh, uh, nurses uh, can uh, do uh, include uh, increasing uh, outcomes. Uh, that, uh, that is a very important research. Now, uh, this uh, research is uh, ongoing. Uh, uh, it, it will take uh, three years. In the uh, first year, we are collecting uh, data in order to clarify outcome uh, indicators uh, that uh, we did a lot of uh, interviews and uh, also beta based upon uh, the uh, health ministry's uh, procedures uh, we are pursuing uh, this endeavor then uh, that was happened in 1990 uh, 19, and then we started a preliminary uh, survey so uh, for nurses uh, or particularly in the uh, in a facility uh, they are providing uh, training uh, for nurses to re uh, receive uh, uh, specific uh, medical intervention by nurses and uh, QL safety and uh, the effectiveness and the cost. So those are the uh, outcome indicators and uh, chronic and acute and also the home-based care. And those are the, uh, uh, are the indicators that we uh, are uh, doing. This uh, This is ongoing uh, the, uh, research is, uh, thanks to the, uh, Ms. Araki, Executive Officer, JNA, uh, cooperate us. Uh, so that is very important. Uh, so uh, because with uh, this kind of data, we are now able to clarify the effectiveness of uh, the uh, home-based care. Uh, it is very important for developing evidence. Therefore, we really uh, ask you to, to participate uh, this uh, research. Uh, Thank you very much. And uh, those are the members of uh, the, uh, my collaborator, the uh, researchers, uh, researcher and graduate program students, and also Ms. Araki, and uh, the, the researcher. Uh, the, uh, with this, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sanada. So we need uh, the uh, care itself. At the same time, uh, care's uh, standardization is uh, very important. Establish evidence is very important. Uh, we need this kind of uh, the evidence uh, is necessary to uh, ask uh, policymakers and uh, so the, uh, that the data should be persuasive and justified. That and uh, Professor Sanada will join us for the discussion later. And now we would like to produce a proceed to the panel discussion evidence-based policy. 
Uh, first of all, uh, we would uh, like uh, to have uh, some views on triple impact, um, nursing policy and policy um, evidence and overseas examples. And now we'd like to start. And first, uh, we have um, the president of the Canadian Nurses Association, Mr. Tim Guest. He'll be talking about how to utilize evidence for policy, Canadian experience. He has a nursing career experience in direct care management and worked as a Nova Scotia chief nurse executive and has been a consultant as well. He has moved, uh, worked in rural, urban, academic organizations. He's also been accreditation surveyor with Accreditation Canada, and served as board members of United Nurses of Alberta and Canadian Nurses Association. He became president in June 2020. Due to the time difference, he will be delivering his talk through video. And I am the president of the Canadian Nurses Association and a long-standing registered nurse. I am honored to be joining you today and want to thank the Japanese Nursing Association for providing me with the, opportu the opportunity to join your Nursing Now Forum and to speak with you today about utilizing evidence for policy. I am, however, saddened that due to the public health concerns, Zoom meetings have replaced in-person gatherings for the time being. The year 2020 was certainly not the year of the nurse and midwife we have all imagined. It tested us as individuals and as a collective. But in the face of this pandemic, nurses around the world have displayed true leadership. This year has given the public a chance to see nurses demonstrating incredible resilience, dedication, and expert care. Each and every one of you has played a critical role in the response to COVID-19. Despite being mentally and physically fatigued, nurses continue to show up caring for those who need them. I want to take a moment to thank you for this dedication. Next slide, please. I'd like to begin today by telling you a little bit about what CNA does for nurses in Canada. Since its inception in 1908, CNA has been a powerful united voice for the nursing profession. Our aim is to advance the practice and profession of nursing, to improve health outcomes, and we do this by centering our work around three main pillars. The first pillar is professional practice. This has always been a major priority for CNA. We are committed to providing support and opportunities for, for professional development programs, educational materials, and tools tailored for nurses. The second pillar is leadership. And for 111 years, CNA has been providing leadership to nurses in Canada and abroad. And this leadership continues today. This year, CNA established the Canadian Academy of Nursing, which is the first pan-Canadian organization dedicated to identifying, educating, and celebrating nursing leaders across all regulated categories and all domains of practice. The third pillar, and the pillar I will be focusing on today, is CNA's advocacy and policy work. CNA is a key player at federal government committees, coalitions, and roundtables using the nursing perspective and the expertise of our members to influence health policies that are important to the public. Our policy and advocacy work are all informed by evidence-based research. Next slide, please. Evidence-based nursing and evidence-informed decision-making began with Florence Nightingale, the founder of Modern Nursing. Nightingale was formidable in training nurses to provide consistent, holistic, and exemplary care. In the 1850s, during the Crimean War, she noted a connection between poor sanitary conditions in the hospital and rising death rates among wounded, wounded soldiers. Her subsequent efforts to sanitize hospitals to save soldiers led to dramatic drops in patient mortality. She steadily forged ahead with ideas and solutions for patient-oriented care using evidence-based decision-making and modernized the nursing profession. I always like to start here with our history to emphasize that. Next slide, please. Evidence-informed decision-making is the ongoing process that incorporates evidence from research findings, clinical expertise, client preferences, 
and other available resources to inform decisions nurses make about and with clients. Patients depend on nurses to do the best on their behalf. As part of their professional accountability, nurses must continually examine the best way to deliver care. CNA believes that all nurses, including clinicians, educators, researchers, administrators, and policymakers, must collaborate with other healthcare stakeholders to facilitate to facilitate evidence-informed decision-making and practice. The collaborative responsibilities around evidence-informed decision-making and nursing practice are shared by many people and groups. These responsibilities include identifying and addressing barriers and enhancing factors within organizational structures and the healthcare system to facilitate and promote evidence-informed practice. Next slide, please. As a professional association, CNA has the responsibility to use the best available evidence as a basis for all of the standards and guidelines we develop. In addition to using evidence to develop our own policies and tools, we lobby the government for funding to support nursing research and health information systems that include nursing care related data. We also lobby the government for he healthy policy, regulation, and legislation that are evidence informed. I'm going to provide you with a few examples of how CNA carries out these responsibilities. Next slide, please. The work CNA does around harm reduction in Canada is a great example of using evidence to inform policy. As I'm sure you know, harm reduction is a public health approach aimed at reducing the adverse health, social, and economic consequences of at risk activities such as the use of illicit substances. This uh, pillar of public health is based on har har reducing harms while still replacing autonomy because evidence shows that telling people to avoid certain things, such as illicit drug use, can be futile. The approach of harm reduction guides you on being safer. For example, here in Canada, we have supervised injection sites where registered nurses provide healthcare services in order to reduce risks such as bloodborne illnesses such as HIV or hepatitis, for example. The context of providing nursing care for persons who use substances can raise questions. However, research shows that doing so can positively influence the health of people who use substances among other positive impacts. CNA has developed a variety of tools to guide nursing practice in harm reduction including research papers, webinars, fact sheets, and a position statement. We have used this evidence to lobby the Canadian government advocating for harm reduction to be a part of substance use regulations and policies. Another example of CNA's work using evidence to inform policy is our work around cannabis. On October 17, 2018, recreational use of can cannabis became legal in Canada. As a result, nurses have had to think differently and learn more about cannabis. With this in mind, CNA's main role has been to create new cannabis resources. Through a grant given to us by Health Canada, CNA has begun work to develop a national nursing framework on the legalization of cannabis, which will be one component of a Canadian public education campaign. CNA has consulted with nurses across the country to identify learning needs around how to address stigma that is, a, is directed towards people who use cannabis. This data will be used to create the nursing framework as well as a series of e-learning modules. Next slide, please. The final example I'd like to leave you with is the tools and resources CNA has developed to provide guidance to nurses during the COVID-19 pandemic. To date, we have developed key messages and webinars on a variety of topics that were impacted by COVID-19, such as mental health, personal protective equipment, and long-term care. These resources were, of course, all informed by research-based evidence, but also heavily informed by nursing expertise, knowledge, and experience, which is another form of evidence. These resources are a great example of how evidence can be evolving. Since the beginning of the pandemic in March, CNA has had to adapt many of these resources to respond accordingly to the evolving evidence that has emerged around COVID-19. 
I chose this example of how CNA incorporates evidence into our policy work to highlight how nurses have to critically appraise and incorporate new evidence. Nursing how is a lifelong learning career. Next slide, please. On that note, I wish to close my talk today by acknowledging all that you do to contribute to evidence-based nursing practice. Once again, thank you for allowing me to speak with you all today and to provide you with just a glimpse of how CNA uses evidence to help inform Canadian health policy. I wish you all a wonderful conference and I will be happy to respond virtually to any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that was President Tim Guest who talked about uh, policy and evidence in Canada. And uh, first, it's important to sit at the table for policy making and uh, try uh, to deliver uh, the evidence based data to patients. And um, the CNA is carrying out a number of activities using the evidence that has been collected. I think it was very straightforward. Thank you very much. Next. And uh, as um, Mr. Temkes has said, um, uh, Florence Nightingale um, was um, started uh, this evidence based uh, policy uh, decision making. And um, at this bicentennial, uh, we are focusing on this evidence um, informed uh, decision making. Um, and this um, is uh, very important for us to understand. And it, by having listening to these examples, I think um, um, we become more familiar with policy and evidence. Um, as he explained in uh, this COVID-19 ex example, uh, we, the evidence evolves. And along with that, we also have to evolve. And as uh, Mr. Guest has said, we have to work with lawmakers, administrators, and others, not ju but not just limited to these, uh, but also nurses, uh, the clinicians, and educators, everyone uh, needs to be connected. I felt this was the case. Um, Professor Teshima, would you like to say something? Thank you very much. Yes, as uh, Ms. Araki has uh, said, um, well, um, um, let me uh, try to give some comments. Um, I forgot to mention about uh, some when she talked about SDGs. ICN has uh, published a uh, report on the SDGs, and it says that nurses have to lead um, this movement. And um, it's a very powerful report. And um, this um, initiative is going to continue until 2030. Well, on TV recently, we often hear about SDGs. Uh, but I think uh, that uh, through this nursing now, uh, we uh, need to understand that it's important for us to collect evidence. And uh, nurses come together to try to produce outcome. Now, why should nurses take the leadership? Well, we understand that um, not 59% of the healthcare workers are nurses. And um, this reminds us uh, that we are playing an important role. And uh, this is something that we have to think more about. Now, about um, the CNA um, present guests uh, presenta uh, presentation, yes, um, in the advocacy um, activities to support nursing. He said evidence is crucial. I think um, that this is something that we have to keep in mind and to think about what we can do here in Japan um, to uh, focus more on evidence. Thank you very much. So from here on, we are going to hear from the presidents of five associations sharing with us examples from the respective countries. First up is Ms. Karen McGowan, president of Irish Nurses and Midwives Organization, or INMO. Now, she's an ANP in the emergency department of Dublin's Beaumont Hospital. Uh, she has served four years in INMO executive and was uh, last month at the special delegate conference elected as president. She looks forward to this new and exciting challenge with keen interest on policy changes and its impact on nursing. Okay, so here's her video. 
Karen McGowan is my name. I am the president of the Irish Nurses and Midwives Organization, and I'm honored to be asked to address this event being hosted by the Japanese Nursing Association. And I bring you warm greetings and an expression of genuine solidarity from your sister and brother nurses and midwives in Ireland. Firstly, I want to reflect on COVID-19, which continues to impact on our lives and will continue into 2021. Nurses and midwives have been and will continue to be at the forefront of delivering compassionate care that has demonstrated commitment to individuals and also wider society. Nurses and midwives have shown the courage to care in often very difficult circumstances. Additionally, the role of nurses and midwives has never been more manifest than at this time of great trial for our world. This truly has been the International Year of the Nurse and Midwife, not necessarily in the manner that we might have hoped. However, the courage and compassion of nurses and midwives has shone through. There can be no doubt, as Dr Tedros from the World Health Organization stated, that nurses provide the backbone of every health system, performing essential services or responding to a crisis. Let us hope that this time next year that there will be a vast improvement and we will be coming to the end phase of COVID-19. But we must learn the lessons of the current crisis to ensure the health services and governments are prepared for any future crisis. COVID-19 has presented in very stark and immediate relief the challenges faced by health and social services throughout the world. It has, more than anything in living memory, also reminded us all of the true worth of health services and that health services are and should always be regarded as services of general interest in our community, which should be available to all based on need and not the ability to pay. To realise such accessibility requires sustained investment in those who know what is required and who can deliver what is needed by the community where it is needed. Hence the imperative of the realisation of the full capacity of our professions in planning and delivering health services. As well as the existential challenges associated with COVID-19, countries around the world also face huge challenges providing healthcare to their people because of scarce resources, the rise in burden of chronic disease like diabetes, and the impact of emerging factors such as climate change and migration. With aging populations and the spread of Western lifestyles, the rapid rise of diseases such as diabetes and health disease are putting health systems under strain. Poorer regions also suffer a disproportionate burden of infectious diseases like HIV, AIDS and malaria and, of course, COVID-19. Furthermore, the global shortage of health worker means that there simply aren't enough to help tackle these threats, and this includes nurses. Nine million more nurses and midwives are needed by 2030. The change in needs of the 21st century means that nurses have an even greater role to play in the future. New and innovative types of services are needed, more community and home-based, more holistic and people-centred, with increased focus on prevention and making better use of technology. These are all areas where nurses can play a leading role. However, maximising nurses' contribution will require that they are properly deployed, valued and included in policy and decision-making. Nursing Now, as you know, aims to improve the health globally by raising the profile and status of nurses worldwide. Influencing policymakers and supporting nurses themselves to lead, learn and build a global movement. Right now, health services aren't getting the most out of nurses who often are undervalued and unable to work to their full potential. The potential of nurses to do more varied jobs and take on more responsibility is often overlooked because of strict hierarchies and ingrained ideas of what they can and cannot do. Furthermore, nurses often have little influence over policy and decision making, despite the understanding and insight to their unique position in the system gives them. Consequently, investing to improve nurses' working conditions, training and leadership skills can deliver the triple impact of improving health, empowering women and strengthening local economies. As the health professionals closest to communities, nurses are promoting good health and preventing disease as well as providing care at the community level. As you know, nurses are at the heart of most health teams. They support and they supervise community health workers and link to more specialised care when needed. But they could do so much more. Studies have shown that when nurses are trained and given greater scope to expand their roles, they deliver impressive results for patients. Maximising this potential will be vital to achieve the goal of universal health coverage, making sure everyone, everywhere, has access to quality essential healthcare services, a fundamental human right. Earlier this year, the first ever State of the World's Nursing Report was launched. 
This report urges governments and stakeholders to strengthen nurse leadership, both current and future leaders, to ensure that nurses have an influential role in health policy formulation and decision making and contribute to the effectiveness of health and social care systems. It is imperative that we empower our current leaders and the generation of emerging leaders from the nursing and midwifery professions by creating a very real opportunity for them to step up and own their roles as agents of change in their own lives, jobs, communities and the wider world. All these reflections circulate around the central theme that pressures and potential crisis abound now and into the future of our health services in each of our countries and in the interconnected world in which we live. However, the news is not all bad and another central theme is that where nursing and midwifery are at the heart of the development of health policy and decision making and consequently when there is investment in leadership, value, numbers and scope of our professions then the challenges of today are our many tomorrows can be addressed. This is our collective challenge and to ensure we realise the value of ourselves that we empower our leaders to advocate and to realise our value today and tomorrow and that we play our part in realising a role as the solution to the challenges we face. We are a powerful community and one that has contributed so much to our world. We are a powerful community that will con contribute so much more to our future. We must believe and work together through our collective efforts. We will realise a bright and healthier future for our communities. May I conclude with some words from our native language. Sláinte hugat agus gorramahugat. Health to you and thank you. Thank you very much. So in policies and decision making, mutual support is very important and I think it was a very insightful lecture. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Shin Gyun Lim, uh, president of the Korean Nurses Association, both member of Nursing Now and the professor emeritus of the College of Nursing of Ifor Women's University. As a former member of the National Assembly of the Republic of Korea in 2012 and 2016, she actively engaged in nursing-related policies and legislation. She was inducted into Sigma Theta Tau International Nurse Researcher Hall of Fame in recognition of her research contribution to nursing field. Now, Dr. C will start her presentation. Welcome to the new year. The nursing knowledge accumulated since Florence Nightingale and the rich field experiences of nurses have been praised by the public. The Korean Nurses Association has devoted ourselves to understand the essence of nursing policy and implement in the field. Currently, KNA is working hard to enact independent nursing law to create nursing department in government to introduce flexible working hours, to make installation of nurse educators mandatory and to reor reorganize the nursing insurance fees. First of all, the PNA has been endeavor to build an independent legal basis for nurses so that high quality and professional nursing services can be provided to not only in the medical institutions, but also in the communities by expanding the nurse's role. Secondly, KNA has been actively promoting the creation of an independent department dedicated for nurses in government body for establishment of systemic and comprehensive nursing policies. In October 2018, the president of the ICN, Annette Kennedy and CEO Howard Cotton visited Korea to meet with the Minister of Health and Welfare and the temporary nursing policy TF team was created in February 2019. Furthermore, CNO of WHO Elizabeth Iro and Minister of Health and Welfare met in Geneva in May 2019 to discuss the ways to promote the TF team to a permanent department and we are currently working on a formal process of the department creation with the government. In Korean cultural context, 
women are under the pressure of taking care of family and children, as well as achieving high performance in the workplace at the same time. This leads women to face career interruption or unfair treatment at workplace. To improve the situation, KNA has discussed with nurses in the field, the labor union, academia, Ministry of Health and Welfare, and the, the National Assembly. In 2021, we are planning to implement a nationwide pilot project called Barriers and Shift Pattern of Duties for Nurses for Healthcare Institutions that comply with the regulations on the number of nurses. New nurses have difficulties with excessive workload adapting to work environment due to the differences between the education they received in the university and the reality in the clinical field, complicated personal relations. Therefore, KNA has been trying to make installation of nurse educators mandatory for all hospitals to mentor new nurses so that they understand the gap between the theory and the clinical field and the build supportive relationships within the workplace. In 2021, KNA is planning to link the nurse residency program with the government in order to help new nurses to stably adapt to the clinical field. Next, let me talk about nursing insurance fee policy. Among 9,000 types of health insurance fees, only about 50 of them are exclusively for nurses, which is extremely insufficient. KNA has been urging the government to reorganize the insurance fees linked to the nurses so that the supply of nurses is stabilized and public can receive high quality nursing services in all regions. Currently, KNA is trying to raise the nursing fees for patient safety and infection-related activities such as infection prevention fees and intensive care quarantine fees. Last year, the coronavirus crisis clearly has shown the necessity of global solidarity since it is not a challenge of a single country. I believe that the evidence-based nursing policy can also be strengthened with the international cooperation. If each country's policies and experiences are accumulated, shared, and actively communicated, realization of stronger evidence-based nursing policies will be possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Shin spoke about the nursing policy making in Republic of uh, Korea. She also emphasized uh, the uh, continuation of career uh, for uh, uh, nurses and also the new nurse, uh, nurses uh, program, uh, she expo uh, explained. And based upon the evidence, uh, so uh, uh, also we can realize a more robust uh, the, uh, uh, nursing policy. Maria Angelica. And uh, next, uh, we would like to hear uh, from uh, the Chilean Nurses Association President, uh, Ms. Maria Angelica Barza Rivero. Um, she has a 39 year experience in practicing at the uh, number of hospitals, primary care management, education, amongst others. And uh, recently, uh, she has uh, been engaged in the uh, Children's Health Program, uh, National Immunization Program at the Binyan del Mal Kirota Program Bureau. After graduating from university, she has actively engaged in professional organizations activities from 2010 to 14. She has served as president of the Balasoi um, Regional Council and assumed her presidency in 2017, in December. Estimado Presidente, Asociación Japonesa de Enfermería, PHND, Toshiko Fukui. Recibo un saludo afectuoso del Colegio de Enfermeras de Chile. Saludo también a las autoridades presentes y enfermeras participantes en este foro internacional. 
de Nursing Now. Es un honor poder estar presente en este magno evento y agradecemos esta invitación a compartir acerca de la campaña Nursing Now en Chile. Dear President, Japanese Association of Nursing PhD, Toshiko Fukui, received an affectionate greeting from the College of Nurses of Chile. I also greet the authorities present and nurses participating in this International Nursing Now Forum. It is an honor to participate at this great event, and we thank the invitation in order to share aspects about the Global Nursing Now campaign in Chile. El Colegio de Enfermeras de Chile. On May 2018, Chile joined the Global Nursing Now campaign at the ICN annual meeting in Geneva, and the following strategies were defined for implementation, design of an action plan to implement the campaign in the country, information and awareness of nursing leaders to join this challenge, awareness of health and government authorities to support the Global Nursing Now campaign, promotion of the effects of the triple impact in nursing and in the country. The objectives to be developed in our country are mass dissemination of the campaign in the country, strengthening nursing leadership, including the Nightingale Challenge, implementation of advanced practice nursing in the first level of care, come up with studies on nursing human resources. As for the nursing situation in the country, some figures show how many we are and how much we should be. According to the Superintendency of Health, until March 2019, it registered 56,942 nurses and 3,188 midwifery nurses in the country. According to the OECD indicators, the indi indicator for nurses in Chile is 2.3 per 1,000 inhabitants, and the OECD average is 8.8. .8. The nurse doctor rate in Chile is 1.1, and the international OECD average is 2.7. According to university data, there are currently, currently around 36,000 13 nursing students. For this reason, we can affirm that there is a lack of professionals to achieve international standards. It requires increasing the endowments in the health system. In our country, 89% are women and 20% are heads of household. Therefore, Developing the proposal of the Nursing Now campaign, we can achieve the triple impact, increase jobs for women nurses, improving the economic conditions and equity of gender. The College of Nurses is the one who leads the campaign in Chile. It has involved the national board and the councils of regions. We signed a commitment with Claudia La Selva nurse from Brazil, nursing now coordinator for Latin America. We sensitize government authorities, including the First Lady of the Republic, to invite them to join this campaign. The campaign is launched in the Hall of Honor of the Congress on August the 9th, 2019 chaired by the national president with the participation of the nursing now coordinator in Chile and we have the presence of the Minister of Health who announces the creation of the Directorate of Nursing in the Ministry of Health, being the national reference for nursing. In the activity, there was a high participation of nurses from Santiago and regions, understanding that nursing now prepares nurses to lead and influence national and global policy. Since the launch, the sensitizations of hospital and primary care managers has begun. 
conversations with other professionals and participation in activities of the Health Commission to update the Health Code, such as promoting the presentation of the campaign in regions. The training of the new young leaders and the promotion of the Nightingale Challenge begins with the Leaders for Change course. The challenge is under development in three hospitals and in a primary health center. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the development of the campaign has been interrupted, but we have understood this is an opportunity to make visible the role of the nurse in the system as it has happened in all countries. They have been from the beginning in the front line leading the care process at all levels of care. Conclusions. The pandemic in Chile has exposed the health care situation in our country strengthen the public health system, improving financing infrastructure, personnel, and capacities to meet the health needs of the population. Invest resources for the development and strengthening of primary health care, especially in greater personnel, especially nurses, to improve nursing care in the population. Promote self-care by implementing, implementing health promotion and prevention programs. Challenges. Political awareness of nurses. Empowerment for leadership. Participation in the elaboration of public policies. Visibility of nursing care. Undergraduate training according to the new post-pandemic COVID-19 paradigm. Finally, for reflection, nursing must be at the forefront and the rescue of the ethical dimension of care and investing in it will contribute not only to the achievement of health goals, but also to those of education, gender equality, work and economic growth. PhD Edith Rivas Riveros, Public Health, University of La Frontera. Nuestros lemas, Yo te cuido y el Nursing Now en Chile. Nuestras eh, imágenes de nuestra sede eh, nacional en la ciudad de Santiago de Chile. Y gracias por su atención. Our mottos, our national building, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was um, the president of uh, the Chilean Nurses Association, uh, Ms. Maria Angelica Baezen Riveco. And uh, she has uh, explained about the situation in Chile, making comparisons with OECD. Lebanon. Next is Dr. Mirna Abi Abdullah Dumit. Uh, president of the Order of Nurses in Lebanon. It's really early in the morning in Lebanon, and she's still participating um, real time. Now, uh, she is the, um, the, peop the person who has um, actually a member of this, um, these organizations, uh, Lebanon. She's been uh, representing uh, this organization, and uh, uh, she has uh, been uh, also the uh, president of this Arab organization, and uh, she has uh, become the president um, in 2018. Uh, conference. Uh, I'll be talking about the triple impact and policy, and I will be presenting uh, from the Lebanese perspective. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Uh, for Lebanon, year 2020 was not an easy year at all. Uh, 
In fact, our uh, problem started end of 2019 when we had a revolution. And then February 2020, we had the first case of COVID. March, April, we went into an economic crisis, economic crash, and we're still living the uh, repercussions of this economic crisis. And then August 4, we had the third biggest uh, atomical uh, explosion in the whole world. It was uh, known under Beirut blast. So the 2020, in fact, was the year of the nurse, but from a different perspective, because in all the four main uh, uh, catastrophic issues that happened in Lebanon, nurses have proven to be the frontliners and the saviors and the pillars of the healthcare system. Next. Um, I'm showing you a few pictures. I was hoping to show you better pictures of my country, but this is the fact now. Uh, next. So the heroic measures of the nurses in the blast where uh, four major hospitals in the capital of Lebanon, Beirut, were destroyed. Nurses were wounded themselves, and they were helping to evacuate patients who were in those hospitals. So they were wounded and they were helping uh, 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 individuals to uh, and uh, they were evacuating patients and dead bodies from their hospitals next so we all know that health system in all countries they are always attempting to improve the access the affordability the quality the efficiency and uh, provide equity and people centeredness and uh, of course uh, for this to be a reality uh, we have to be able to hear the opinion and the perspective of the nursing body because we are uh, we represent the highest level of health leadership and we need uh, to have our decision integrated in policy. So we need to make sure that mechanisms at all levels are being developed so that nurses are engaged uh, uh, to affect this uh, last and worthy change. But the first thing to do is uh, for us nurses to have a better understanding of the highly complex nature of policy influence and policy making. And this is something that we're not always aware of. We nurses, we, uh, uh, for until not recently, we always try to keep away from policy and policy making. But in Lebanon, we're aware that policy and policy making are important tools for the nursing body if we want our voice to be heard, if we want our opinion to be listened to. So we need to be sitting on the decision making table. Next. Uh, also, the uh, International Council of Nurses believes that health is a human right. And of course, ICN is at the for forefront of advocating for access to health. And nurses, we are the key to deliver this health. So uh, all over the world, until now, we have individuals and communities who are suffering from illness because they cannot have access or uh, to health or they cannot afford it. But we have also to remember that the right to health applies also to nurses. And we know that, and it's evidence-based, that improved quality and safety for patients depends on a positive working environment for staff, i.e. nurses, which means that nurses have the right to a safe working environment, adequate remunerations, and access to resources and education. And we must add to this the right to be heard and have a voice in decision making and policy development implementation. And this is what we are doing in Lebanon as order of nurses. We're doing our best to be involved in decision making and policy development. Next, please. 
So uh, we all know that empowering nurses will have a triple uh, effect. It will provide good health and well-being for the population and for the nurses themselves. It will uh, make sure that we have gender equality at all levels in terms of shifts, in terms of remuneration, in terms of taking higher position. And of course, if we empower nurses and they are at the decision-making table, we are uh, sure that that we will have decent work and economic growth because with good work environment, nurses will be satisfied, will have a positive impact on quality of life and quality of care, and people will be, uh, uh, patients will be discharged earlier, and then we have an economic growth. Next, please. So why nurses? Because we have a unique understanding of the healthcare system, because we are uh, at the heart of this healthcare system, we can understand the strengths and the weaknesses. And we, uh, because we work within the, this healthcare system, because we are the pillars of this healthcare system, we know how to overcome challenges and we know how to overcome dysfunctional system. So uh, to do this, our perspectives, our opinion must be represented at the highest level of health leadership. And we need to integrate, I repeat this, into decision making. And we need to engage nurses at all levels. Next. So in order to do this, we have to use advocacy. Advocacy is extremely important because it will help our voice to be heard. It will promote our rights and will make sure that our views and wishes are considered when decisions are being made about our lives. Next. Next. So as order of nurses, we're using this technique, this approach to uh, make the voice of nurses in Lebanon heard. So we use different strategies. We use communication media a lot. We uh, try to have alliances, strategic alliances uh, with the order of physicians, order of lawyers, powerful orders uh, in the country. Uh, we never take no as an answer. We always keep on trying, trying until we reach what we want. We uh, sometimes we are not invited at important meetings, so we invite ourselves so uh, we don't get intimidated very easily. We develop the tenacity to bounce back from negative responses, and this is helping us a lot. Uh, we try always to identify strategic stakeholders and make alliances with them. We always engage the public and the stakeholders in what we want to achieve so that they can support us. By doing this, we're trying to empower the nurses and therefore reach where we want to reach. Next. Uh, the future always depends on what you do today, and we're trying our best to put nursing on the decision-making table. And we do believe that once we choose hope, anything is possible. And we're very sure that we're going to reach our goals. Next. Thank you very much, for again, for giving me this opportunity. And hope to see you uh, after this pandemic on a face-to-face -face basis. Thank you. Dr. Dermit, thank you so much for your great presentation and sharing your experiences. Thank you. Okay, so from Dr. Dumit, safety as well as a working environment that is uh, friendly to uh, the um, health workers as well as the uh, importance of evidence for policy making was this, um, mentioned as well. Next, uh, Dr. Christine Duffield, President of Australian College of Nursing, will present us. President Duffield is a president of nursing and health sciences management at Ethics Cohen University and Emeritus Professor at the University of Technology, Sydney. She is a highly accomplished researcher with experience in the health and education industries in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. She is one of a top uh, most cited Australia and New Zealand nursing and midwifery uh, professors. She joined Australian College of Nursing Board in uh, 2013 
and has been just re-elected for the uh, her third term as a president of ACN. Now, please watch uh, uh, VDL. The president of the Australian College of Nursing. I'd like to thank the Japanese Nursing Association for inviting us to the Nursing Now Forum, and I'm part of session one, Triple Impact and Policy. The Australian College of Nursing, or ACN as we know it, has as part of our, our mission to advance nurse leadership, to enhance health care and promote safe patient care. And I'm going to show you how this fits into the Triple Impact Report and how it translates into policy and practice. If you go to the, the Triple Impact Report, the third recommendation states clearly, develop nurse leaders and nurse leadership. Experienced nurse leaders are needed in the right place to help nursing deliver its potential and ensure that the distinctive nursing perspective is included in policy making and decision making. And part B of that states, ensure that all countries have appropriate nurse leadership posts throughout all their structures and organizations. Now, at the Australian College of Nursing, we have done this in, in a variety of ways, but I'm going to focus on one particular aspect, which is our three programs which facilitate leadership development. The first of these, which we've had for some time, is the Emerging Nurse Leader Program. It's designed, so there's five entry points, but it's designed for nurses who are just completing their, their education, enrolled or registered nurses, and progresses up to up to five years of experience. So it's a, it's a program of personal and professional growth where they have a mentor and they can join at any time post-registration or before they've registered. And that's been going, as I said, for a while. The second program that we have is the Mid-Career Leadership Program, which didn't commence until last year, 2019. Um, it's designed for people who have six years experience or more. They need to be in a leadership position, and that could be whether they're a leadership clinician or a manager or a researcher. So they're in a leadership position, they have demonstrated le leadership characteristics, and they participate in a five-day workshop that's uh, residential where they're exposed to a whole range of topics. So things like management 101, staffing, budgeting, negotiating, how policies develop, those sorts of really interesting skills that nurses need to, to be in a leadership position. And after the five days intensive workshop, there is about six months of mentoring and learning that, um, that carries them into, hopefully, a, a different leadership role. The third aspect of our program also then would be the Nurse Executive Leadership Program, which we do have, but I need to go back and explain to you, as a because this is an example of how we have taken what's in the Triple Impact Report, written a program around it, and, and now are going to impact policy by virtue of this. So our Nurse Executive Leadership Program, uh, which we've just launched, but it came about in uh, the, in 2018, the International Council of Nurses, put out its position statement on nurse staffing. And the Australian College of Nursing was in the process of writing its own position statement, but there was nothing that we could have added to the International Council statement. So in 2018, we adopted that as our um, staffing uh, policy. There were several things in that policy that were critical for us. The first was that you needed to use anybody staffing needed to use an accepted methodology. It didn't specify which one, so you could use ratios, you could have used nursing hours per patient day, but there did need to be a baseline staffing methodology. The second aspect that was important was decisions needed to be made based on patient and staff data. The third thing that was important was that RNs should not be replaced with other staff. The fourth was that if staffing need to be adjusted in the course of a day or a shift, then expert judgment could be used. So appointing a nurse manager to look after a unit award and then accepting that her professional or his professional judgment was that we required a different staffing should be accepted. The fifth one was that we need healthy work environments and we all know the importance of that. But the most critical aspect, the sixth one, was there must be a nurse executive with authority over budgets to safeguard staffing. That was one of the critical features for how we think that we are going to have an impact on policy. So from that statement, we designed a nurse executive capability framework. So we searched the gray literature, we searched the refereed academic literature, and we designed a nurse executive capability framework which we then gave to a Delphi panel. We had three rounds of a Delphi panel, and the capability framework that we now have is the one that has been approved by 
the executive panel, and it has been adopted by the Australian College of Nursing. And in critically, it's about nurse executives oversighting things strategically, but being at the table where decisions are made about staffing and budgets. And that's the position at which we will have an impact on policy. Now, it's not surprising that the very first set of capabilities under leading the service, so there's three major categories, leading, leading the service, leading others, and leading the self. Under leading service, the very first batch of competencies is about managing resources. And we say clearly, and I quote, demonstrate efficient and safe patient care delivery and improved outcomes by number one, exerting influence to gain appropriate type and level of physical, human, and financial resources, and secondly, establishing and maintaining appropriate staff numbers and skill mix for the clinical practice environment. The very first one up, absolutely essential for nurse executives. Having developed the framework, the next step was to develop the nurse executive leadership program. And you'll see on the slide the, the advertisement for it. It's about, we will have master classes with nurses and non-nurses. We've got some learning sets and some mentoring. So we have now designed a program from it. But then, of course, as we all know, along came COVID-19 and, and the world changed. So the programs that we had planned for October, the mid-career nurse leadership program and the nurse executive leadership program, we've had to cancel. That said, they will be rescheduled for next year, and we already have a waiting list of over 150 for each program. We only ever take 25 uh, applicants to each program. So we have a substantial waiting list and we're hoping at some point next year we will offer pro both programs again. And so in closing, what I hope you can see is that having started with our mission statement that links in with the, the triple impact report, developing the programs in the way that we have, we hope to have an impact on policy. So on behalf of the Australian College of Nursing, thank you very much and good luck with the rest of the conference. And thank you very much. And uh, we've just whole heard about the triple impact and are trying to comply this with the mission of uh, the Australian College of Nursing. And, and she has given a detailed explanation of the three programs uh, that they are promoting in Australia. Now, from here and after, uh, we would now like to uh, carry out the panel discussion. We have already heard of uh, from five um, presidents of nursing associations overseas. And um, we've come to understand uh, that they're all developing leadership uh, to participate in policy making and promoting evidence-based policy. Um, um, Executive Officer uh, Dr. Araki and Professor Sanada will join us in this panel discussion. And with no further ado, I'd like to ask a question to Professor Sanada. We heard from the CNA president and others um, that um, evidence influenced decision making is taking place. Now, um, in order to carry out evidence informed decision making in nursing, what are the most difficult issues, uh, challenges uh, that uh, people face? Thank you for the question. I think uh, we've heard uh, outstanding initiatives uh, being carried out overseas and from the five speakers, um, but collecting data. Um, is uh, going to become even more important in the future. I was listening and thinking about that because, um, yes, I'm talking about some uh, trivial things, um, but, um, w well, um, as a professor, I am doing policy research, uh, but there are limits to what say, one single individual can do the, because... Um, uh, for policy research, uh, we uh, need to, first of all, collect information from uh, the patients. And it is uh, the various nurses of different hospitals or medical institutions that collect the data. And um, the data that we receive from these nurses will then have to be um, made into data that holds value. And without the participation of everyone, it's, this will not be possible. What is the biggest challenge as a researcher? Well, um, f first of all, um, uh, the institutions that are participating and the nurses are that are participating. Um, it's very difficult to recruit these people. 
Well, I think uh, this is a big challenge for me, um, and um, I'm struggling. And um, I'm wondering whether I can produce the data that is necessary without their cooperation. But at the same time, well, um, in my presentation, I gave the example of uh, 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 just monetizing the value of nursing. Well, um, that is um, uh, the insurance fees uh, that are paid and uh, uh, the remuneration to nurses and how much budget is allocated to nursing. And um, people are talking about cost cutting. Uh, but um, what's most important is uh, the QOL of patients. We have to enhance the QOL of the patients. And um, well, as we see this triple impact, first of all, contribute to health care. We need to visualize this, and we need data to visualize that we are enhancing um, quality of care. Uh, because uh, the reason why we cannot do this is because we cannot look at the effect using the data that we already have. I just talked about the cost effect, uh, but what I mean by effect is uh, this quality of life, the patient's quality of life, whether we can enhance, we have enhanced the quality of life of patients. There are indicators that measure this, but we don't have the basic data to do the measurement. Now, um, we um, researchers of nursing want to ask the people at the front line uh, to work with us um, so that we can enhance the value of nursing and produce the necessary data to do this. We need to build up data. And uh, for, to build up data, data uh, we um, uh, need to have the cooperation. Because if nursing goes um, unrecognized, it will be a big problem. And it's difficult to have to face up to these things. So having one place to collect the data and to constantly uh, collect the data, have, have a cohort, cohort uh, where we can collect constantly collect the data and make the data readily available. So we need a data center, a policy research center uh, to do this. But we don't have this in Japan. I think uh, this is a problem that we face in research. And also, this is a problem that exists uh, and uh, hampering the enhancement of the value of nursing and is hampering uh, the enhancement of quality of life of patients. I think uh, that this is the biggest challenge that we face. And um, I would like to ask JNA um, to try to establish such a center. If so, then um, I think uh, that we can make a major impact um, to policy making. Um, Dr. Araki? Well, um, Professor Sanada has said uh, that um, in order to change uh, the current situation, each and every nurse should try to participate in the process of the research. And also, uh, we need a hub or a center to collect the data. And JNA should study the possibility of setting up such a center. Uh, but. Um, um, evidence-based nursing or evidence-based decision-making. Um, well, um, can Dr. Araki talk about the role of professional organizations like JNA? Well, in the chat, um, I did see a question that was like that, um, related to that. In uh, policy making, um, how uh, can uh, we have a one voice um, to uh, be delivered to the policymakers. I think uh, this was raised. And also, um, the researchers um, are doing their own research, but um, these have lack consistency. And this might not necessarily lead uh, to enhancing the value of nursing. So um, we have to share the same understanding. I have one voice was uh, what a comment on the chat at JNA. Um, you're asking what kind of programs we have in place um, to make this happen. But um, at this point in time, um, the, um, for, um, the Nursing Now campaign has uh, led us to face the same direction. We came to recognize that we need to have evidence-based uh, practice. And uh, therefore, here we are talking about triple impact and policy. That's uh, precisely the reason why we chose this theme. Now, we haven't reached the point where we have any specific projects at JNA. Uh, but uh, in the variety of projects that we're doing, we are trying to build up evidence 
where possible. We think that this is important. As a nursing um, organization, we have to listen to the voices of nurses who are working at the front line. We then analyze, um, identify the problems, and try to think about what um, advocacy is necessary. Um, and um, having understand what we need to advocate for, uh, we will build up the evidence to prove this. And uh, it could be the legal system or the political process. Um, these things need to be understood. And at the right timing, we have to raise these issues uh, to the policymakers. And what's most important is, as has been said, we need to concentrate this effort and have one voice. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Sanada, having heard uh, Dr. Araki's comment, do you have anything to add? Uh, do you have to concentrate everything into one center? I think uh, that's one thing. Yes, uh, we have to concentrate um, to get the other, and I hope uh, that JNA uh, will think more about how to build up the evidence and use this for advocacy. As an organization um, doing research, education, and policy making, and I think uh, that you can make a major contribution. Um, I'm looking forward to JNA's future. Thank you very much. Well, uh, from my side, if I may add, um, the last speaker um, from Australia, um, she talked about the leadership program. I think uh, that we need to have the people who are capable of providing such training, and uh, from the um, novice nurses uh, to the mid-career to more experienced um, nurses. Um, well, in Australia, they have uh, such outstanding programs in place. Uh, but in Japan, maybe we should try to think about um, such training at different stages of the career. And we need to strengthen, for example, the mid-career a training. I think there, that is one area that JNA can work on. Uh, Professor Sanada and uh, Dr. Araki, thank you very much for your contribution. May I? Well, um, yes, um, there's one comment that I've received. Um, about um, uh, the presentation by uh, CNA and uh, the mental health uh, policy. What kind of evidence nurses should be providing to the government? And uh, how, if um, such uh, evidence has been presented, how the government has responded? Well, especially about COVID-19 mental health. Um, this questioner asked about what kind of advocacy has been carried out in Canada. Well, um, the, the Canadian representative was giving a video message. We're not linked online. So um, we cannot ask directly this question, uh, but the president has said uh, that if there are any questions, he would like to respond in some way or other. Um, so we will make sure uh, that uh, this question be um, sent uh, to the Canadian um, Nursing Association president so that we can try to get a response. Thank you very much. And um, I understand that there were no further questions as of now. Okay. So we would like to... Um, communicate with the participants at the public viewing venues. Um, thank you very much. So we have organizations participating from uh, uh, physically separated um, venues. Uh, first, uh, Kanagawa Nursing Association, Ms. Dr. Hanai, the president. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the very fruitful discussion and presentation. And first of all, uh, Dr. Sanada mentioned the design are for uh, bed sore or pressure ulcer. When um, we introduced that, uh, we were able to make much improvements and uh, visibility. And so that was uh, something that we were very happy about. And it is um, taken for granted now. But once again, I'm reminded of the importance and also in the field, the nurses, um, of course, have a lot of difficulties in the uh, field, but again, visual data uh, regarding nursing um, is very important, so we have to renew our awareness about that. Now, I am the head of um, Kanagawa Nursing Association. 
about 80,000 um, clinical nurses um, are with us, and 38,000 members um, are with our association approximately, and in the Kanagawa prefecture or to the prefectural government, uh, we are, of course, um, submitting proposals and requests um, for various measures uh, and policies. But what's important, most of all, is the voices of the nurses. In other words, what are the challenges that they face? What are the ways that they want to make improvements on those challenges? Um, our association, of course, would like to gather such voices and, of course, the executive um, officers will um, feed us with their views, and uh, we are submitting uh, requests to the prefectural government. And in doing so, again, evidence is the most important, which is the theme of today's discussion. But it's quite difficult to gather evidence, frankly, and the Dr. Uh, Tishima mentioned uh, Linko and Kanaga Prefecture. In this prefecture, there are about 350 hospitals, and only 25 of them participate in RINCO. And so it's only like 7% of the total. And therefore, if um, the, uh, the workers in the field uh, can leverage that, uh, that would be much better. We would like to do that. But uh, in order to do that, though, uh, we have to have some extra energy, so to speak, on the part of the um, nurses. And so they need to be able to allocate time, or they have to have the necessary systems to enable them to participate in this program. So my question is, Rinko and the data collection methods, um, as Dr. Teshima mentioned, or rather uh, Dr. Sanada mentioned, um, this could apl um, apply a lot of burden on the nurses. And so with that in mind, how should we go about doing this, collecting data? Um, this is what I would like to ask you for your feedback. Thank you very much. Yes, that's a very difficult one. Yes, um, Dr. Sanada's uh, study and research I am supporting as well. This is really difficult, Frank, but uh, hospitals uh, that fall into this category, of course, they, we call them and they understand the importance of this research, but given COVID-19 pandemic, um, it's quite difficult, but still they have the willingness um, to participate or look for ways to be able to participate. Uh, Dr. Sanada, do you have anything uh, you can share with us about the cooperation of the nurses in the field to get data from them? Yes. The preliminary test, um, in, we had to have 160 facilities, but we recruited the um, hospitals and only 80, about half of the required number um, are participated. And we spent three months recruiting the hospitals. And what they said was the, it was a bad timing. And also they also said it's too time consuming. They have this willingness of participating or cooperating, but it takes maybe 15 minutes per day. And then if there are five, it would be more than one hour total. And so what I thought was how efficiently data can be collected. And on top of that, in a short time, uh, without too much burden on the people collecting the data um, is what we have to really think about. Of course, the contents are something or the work itself is being carried out. It's not a problem, It's but the burden in terms of labor as well as the time requirement and also how to input the data uh, is another challenge. Uh, it has to be something simpler than manual input. It has to be on a web-based uh, system so that we can minimize the burden that we um, have on the participants. So we want to maximize the uh, use of technology. Hopefully, we can reduce the time required to one third of what it does now. So I hope everybody will appreciate um, these efforts that we're trying to make. Thank you very much. OK, um, that was President Anai. Next is Aichi Nursing Association. President Miura, Ms. Miura, please, any comments? 
Yes, thank you very much for the introduction. I am Miura of Aichi Nursing Association. And um, so triple impact and policy was the topic where the presidents of the uh, nursing and midwifery um, associations talked um, about this subject, as well as Dr. Araki and others. And I read the SDG's report as well. And I was given this opportunity to speak. So I would like to use this um, chance to reflect upon what I thought about the lectures that I heard today, as well as what I thought um, after reading the document, the SDGs document. Now, in 2002, Barnes Pressures and uh, Susan Gordon's um, publication, um, Voices from uh, silence um, is what I was reminded of. In other words, uh, we should not keep quiet. Nurses need to speak up so that the importance can be recognized and understood. And uh, so, um, and the book actually calls out for nurses to really voice their views out. And I was actually uh, the vice um, head of the nursing department. And uh, e even after that, I um, thought to myself that visualization is important. I want to visualize as much as possible in the field of um, care. Um, so I was listening to the lectures today, um, thinking about this, and I understand there are so many challenges that we have, but we have to um, really work on evidence so that uh, it links to policies. But of course, for evidence to be there, we have to have data collected. But of course, it requires a lot of burden and workload on the part of the uh, nurses. And so we really have to pay attention to that, but work on that as well. Now, given um, the set uh, remuneration or um, system um, for the um, medical uh, payments, um, evidence is, of course, um, dealt with. Um, there are additional um, payments uh, for night shifts and so forth. And we can actually uh, take measures so that uh, we can uh, reduce the overall cost, but then increase cost where it is necessary, for example, uh, addressing BETSOR. Um, and uh, as um, Professor Feshima mentioned, um, this is what we really need to do. And I think when you go um, look back, um, these were recognized as um, something that is worth um, paying um, reimbursement for after the nurses actually uh, made it clear that it is valuable. And outcome is very important, and I understand the importance of data. But then the next step is how to utilize the data. Uh, we have shortage of nurses. That's a serious problem. According to literature abroad, uh, the uh, burnout of um, nurses and uh, turnover of nurses will decrease once um, they have um, better uh, working conditions. But the situation today is reversed, so we have to make improvements. And we need to, therefore, have leaders with the leadership that can lead uh, so that we can uh, um, actually uh, translate our voices into policies. And uh, I think we have to continue running this PDCA cycle. So it's a continuous effort. Now, today I was able to listen to valuable uh, lectures and listen to so much insightful information. And um, I was very much um, grateful for the insights as I run this organization. And I'd like to thank you all for giving me this opportunity. So uh, I have a one uh, question. Uh, that question is directed to uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Teshimer uh, in Australia. Uh, uh, I was impressed by uh, their leadership role. So when I was uh, 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 when the students uh, 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 during uh, 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 university days, maybe some syllabus uh, 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 curriculum should include uh, the uh, learning uh, policy. That is a very important thing, I think. 
uh, therefore, uh, from the uh, freshman, uh, I mean that uh, the, in the first uh, year uh, of the uh, uh, newly graduated nurses, uh, only the waiting uh, for uh, the instruction from uh, uh, the physicians and the head nurses. Uh, therefore, uh, I'd like to have some uh, your observation uh, uh, from te uh, Dr. Tessima. Thank you very much. That is very important, I think. In other countries, so uh, when uh, the students are uh, 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 junior high school, uh, the students, particularly the uh, female students, uh, uh, some training uh, was, um, uh, is made for them to uh, show the leadership and uh, to, to say uh, the, their observations and opinions. Uh, and uh, during that process, uh, they are taught how to uh, uh, show the leadership, uh, comparing to uh, uh, those other, uh, other countries uh, uh, in, in Japan. Uh, we don't uh, we don't have this kind of uh, uh, experiences, of course, except uh, our uh, generations. We learned a lot about the raising opinions. As therefore, uh, President Miller rightly said that, uh, that it is too late to start uh, the, uh, uh, this kind of leadership education after uh, they are employed. And during the school days, uh, this leadership training should be put into place in the cu uh, curriculum and the executive officer uh, Yaman Motor in charge of this kind of uh, education and uh, matters. Uh, therefore, the, uh, uh, that is a very important point for uh, uh, JNA's uh, future uh, discussion. Thank you very much. In order uh, for uh, Japanese nurses uh, to show the leadership in the future, uh, university education is very important. Thank you very much on uh, this question. Thank you, uh, Professor Amira. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Hanai and uh, also Professor Amira, uh, based upon their experience as an uh, NASA administrator, uh, they gave us a very important observations. And uh, lastly, so uh, we will have uh, uh, some comments uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Yamamoto, Japan Association of Nursing Programs and University. Thank you very much uh, the, uh, for giving uh, us to ha attend this kind of meaningful event. Our uh, organization uh, is uh, aiming uh, at uh, the improving uh, university nursing education and uh, uh, contributing uh, uh, people's health. Uh, uh, right now, 287 universities are uh, joining our uh, 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 organizations. Uh, so uh, due to uh, the COVID-19, uh, the uh, cl uh, clinical practice uh, come, uh, are canceled. Uh, therefore, quickly now we are uh, to try to find out new ways uh, to educate nursing students. Uh, so in this endeavor, uh, of course, uh, the uh, collecting data is very important. Based upon that, uh, we must uh, pursue our uh, uh, de developing activities uh, for uh, the uh, curriculum. So, uh, triple impact report uh, stipulates the uh, best use of uh, nursing uh, nurses' potential. Uh, so, uh, also our organization have uh, some mission and uh, also the role uh, for uh, university education uh, uh, for nursing. Uh, so, looking back at uh, the, uh, what happened, uh, what uh, the discussion had been made uh, so far today. And uh, our organization also uh, uh, must be responsible for how to promote uh, nursing education. I raised, uh, I want to raise the, uh, four points uh, for uh, nursing university uh, education. And the first, uh, uh, the, uh, evidence should be made uh, for uh, the uh, staffing and also the uh, nursing effectiveness of the nursing care. And uh, uh, also, multiple organizations should uh, come together to create a robust that. Uh, therefore, uh, there should be collaboration between uh, researchers and, uh, and uh, multiple uh, uh, front lines in order to create one voice. Uh, therefore, uh, we uh, need uh, the, uh, education uh, the, uh, to train uh, the competent students uh, uh, to lead uh, this kind of uh, research activities. Uh, so how to use 
uh, the data, uh, for example, compassion and the interpersonal relationship uh, under those circumstances, the care is uh, provided. Uh, but uh, the, uh, when we look at the, the advanced uh, nursing, we must uh, put an importance on and the essence of nursing. So uh, not only the uh, uh, traditional uh, intervention uh, the research, uh, but also uh, the uh, other evidence is necessary uh, uh, to create uh, the uh, uh, future nursing. So uh, this kind of uh, nursing research should be trained. Uh, so now uh, the uh, uh, global uh, area uh, is uh, uh, very uh, close with each other and also communicate this kind of evidence from Japan to, to uh, other countries is very important. Lastly, so uh, we need uh, to show the nursing voices to uh, the uh, uh, policies and uh, in order to do this, uh, nursing leaders should be trained first, uh, and uh, that is an, a very important mission of uh, the uh, uh, nursing uh, universities and uh, uh, our organization uh, will uh, make an order effort to realize uh, uh, this uh, in order to contribute to the uh, triple impact from uh, nurses. Uh, so uh, as for uh, the leadership, uh, my question is this. Universities and other academic and research organizations uh, should be uh, more situated closely with the front lines. Uh, what kind of efforts uh, we need to have a close relationship uh, between uh, universities and the front lines? Uh, I'd like to have some uh, your observations, uh, Dr. Alaki and also uh, Dr. Tishima. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, President Yamamoto. So, essence of the, uh, this uh, uh, concurrent session is uh, the closer relationship uh, between university, front line, and the professional association. And that is very important uh, for us uh, to create the evidence uh, which will be utilized for uh, policy making. Uh, the uh, front lines have uh, uh, seems to have an, a lot of uh, evidence, uh, but uh, the how? Uh, but the people in the front line uh, uh, do not know how their data will be utilized. Uh, therefore, this kind of a system should be uh, communicated to the front lines. That is the sort of the comment uh, so far uh, we have received. Dr. Tanada, uh, could you give us uh, your observation? So, and I'm working for university and uh, try to be closely associated with the front lines. Uh, this, that is in sort of the uh, uh, position now I have uh, as a uh, researcher. <laughs> so I'd like to say that is a very cute uh, voice. So I dare say that, uh, that we shouldn't uh, perform uh, uh, research uh, on the sake of a research. Uh, that is uh, very important for us to have uh, in my mind. Only the uh, pursuing uh, doctorate uh, degree, uh, that kind of research is very uh, not very nice. The research should be translated into front line. That is uh, the sort of the education we need to uh, teach the students and uh, researchers uh, should write uh, the uh, academic papers and the, the papers should be utilized in the uh, front lines. This should be underst and, uh, understood and, uh, in the front lines. The, uh, and also, uh, so the education system is necessary so that the front line people uh, can uh, the best use of uh, that the research. That is a sort of the dissemination uh, education. Uh, so the, the uh, gap uh, between evidence and the practice should be narrowed down. That is a sort of the method we must uh, uh, incorporate it in the uh, university education. Uh, that is a sort of the uh, observation from university. Thank you very much. Um, Yes, um, well, we have a variety of work that we are doing, and um, data um, naturally um, is created 
and um, well, it's important to have a mechanism where all the necessary data is sent to the necessary destination. Well, Lingle, um, uh, this database system that we have is difficult to input, and uh, this is a problem that we have. Therefore, universities and researchers, um, professional associations need to work, think together to facilitate the process of utilizing and providing data. Well, yes, um, listening uh, to um, everyone's opinions, I think um, uh, that this is something that needs to be taken up in the advocacy activities. It's almost 10 years ago uh, that um, uh, this hospital in the United States, which only has some 400 beds, it's a small hospital, uh, but um, there were uh, some uh, um, 10 nurses who were just doing data input. Uh, they were dedicated to data input and um, well, um, um, quality management risk management nurses are being employed at big hospitals in Japan, uh, but um, if it's really necessary, uh, we uh, need to try to employ uh, such people, and we have to have a mechanism to employ such people. And as I said earlier, 80% uh, or close to 80% of the hospitals have less than 300 beds in Japan, and uh, therefore there are many hospitals which are unable to do these things. Things. A JNA uh, needs uh, to try to establish a data management center uh, to make it easier for them uh, to provide data and ensure risk management. Uh, this is a future vision that we also would like to create. Uh, that is the impression I got listening to everyone. Thank you. Yes, um, I fully support Professor Teshima, uh, but. Um, as a university, we need to be able to be able to do data management, data science. And as a discipline, uh, we should try to incorporate data science in nursing. And by doing so, I think um, that we can employ more data from the field, uh, from universities. Um, in our new curriculum have included data science, and we have programs to develop data science experts. And we will try to develop such young people. And as Professor Deshima said, if it, people find that it is necessary to have some people key in the information and manage the data, uh, then I think we can collaborate there by providing the necessary talent, and we become one voice. Thank you. Um, Dr. Yamamoto, would you like to say something? No. Um, as a nursing university, I think we still have a number of challenges that we need to address, but we will do our best. Thank you. And thank you for sparing your time to join us and give us your, feed, your input. Well, uh, we heard uh, from the three public viewing venues. Um, now, um, we would like to look at um, the questions or comments that have been raised from the participants in our chat box. Uh, one a question to Professor Sanada. Um, if, if you show evidence and come up with results, um, even in Japan, it might be possible to introduce a nurse practitioner in Japan. Do you think this is possible? You know, thank you for the question. Yes. Um, well, um, Yes, I think um, uh, this, people are receiving um, training for specific skills, and they are taking part in my research. And the next step is uh, to try to establish a new system. And I think uh, that this is where this question is coming from. But um, the biggest concern or thing uh, that we need to think about is um, at well, um, and receive, um, going through this specific skill, skill training is not leading the way to becoming a nurse practitioner, uh, but um, looking at uh, the people providing us data resource, um, they have different educational backgrounds. And um, they are going through this training to acquire specific skills. But um, next year, um, we are going to have everyone participating in this course, no, from April, um, uh, do this protocol. And um, 
they, they will learn how to analyze data, and there will be a lot of data that come up through this process. And we will look at uh, what kind of people with what kind of background, if they receive a certain type of training, uh, can produce results. And um, uh, this uh, will, for example, lead the way to advocacy activities in the future. And in the future, uh, this uh, will uh, lead the way uh, to introducing nurse practitioners as a means to use evidence. Thank you very much. In concession, uh, uh, in this session one, uh, we have looked into um, uh, the overseas examples of evidence and policy. And uh, we have looked into how evidence is being provided uh, to the decision makers. And um, through this discussion, it's come clear um, that um, nursing, in order for nursing to uh, demonstrate its capability, we need to raise our voices and deliver our voices. And for this, uh, we need to have people assume leadership positions, state their opinions, and participate in decision making. And we uh, need to get the decision making makers or policymakers see the effect of using evidence. So we should not rely on others to do this. Instead, we, each one of us, uh, need to take ownership and uh, try uh, to provide the necessary evidence, raise our voices at the necessary places. At this session, uh, we have exchanged views on this, and we'd like to continue uh, this effort with all of you. Professor Teshima, please. Thank you. And with this, we would like to end this session one. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Sanada.